a special welcome to those of you who are joining us on KLNJ Radio and on Facebook. Let's begin this celebration. joy and love. Four candles, four promises continually offered to us by God, and all of them manifest in this one we light tonight, the Christ candle. In Christ we find the hope of transformation, the peace that follows justice, the joy of self-fulfillment in community, and the love that encompasses us in all our diversity empowering us to make our own unique contribution to this world. In Christ we find light and life and the courage to be like him, answering his call and following in his footsteps. Will you join me? We rejoice. we rejoice in God's steadfast presence in our lives and in God's unique presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary, growing through childhood into an adult ministry, in all his life manifesting the peace, love, and justice of God, his voice undimmed by the centuries, his call and his promise as clear to us as it was to his disciples so long ago. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night, in our hearts, our minds, our lives. May the light of your light be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Let's join together in this celebration as we sing our first hymn, number 234, O Come, All Ye Faithful. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 6. Please stand if you are able.
give him glory. Christ is now on earth. Exalt him. O ye words, sing to the Lord. O you nations, praise him in joy. For he has been glorified. You may be seated. You probably just need to turn my mic down rather than the whole. But in the beginning, the biblical story begins with chaos. Nothingness. And then... God showed up. God spoke and creation, this world, this universe came into being. The ultimate creation was a man and a woman created to have communion, to walk and to talk with God. But that wasn't enough for humanity. They didn't just want to be with God. They wanted to be God. They broke the only command they were given. And sin entered into the world. However, God showed up and promised an antidote to their sin. One born of a woman who would bruise the serpent, take away the penalty of sin, of selfishness. But humanity would have to wait. During all that waiting time, God kept showing up. To the child of a Chaldean shop owner, if Jewish stories are to be believed, God showed up and called Abram to leave his home, a civilized large city, to go and live in a tent. God promised a great nation would come from Abram. It took several hundred years, but it finally happened. Abram's descendants were living as Egyptian sl slaves, and God showed up again. He had heard their prayers, called another man to deliver them, to lead them to the promised land. During that time, they became a nation, but they also were given a heavenly law to follow. The law was designed to show them how to live life God's way, and a priesthood was developed to lead them in God's life. It was another several hundred years later and this Israelite nation wanted a king. The first king was what the people wanted. He didn't measure up in God's eyes because he wasn't willing to listen to God. So God showed up again and another man was called to be king. This one wasn't perfect either. But he did know enough to listen to God, to repent when necessary, Savior, Priest, King. God promised throughout the Old Testament that he would show up again as the ultimate Savior, Priest, and King. Though many believed it had been thousands of years since these promises, the Israelites were struggling to exist under the oppression of the Romans. They longed for this King and Priest and Savior to come. Yet I wonder how many had given up on the God who shows up. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, you have brought us again to the glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day, and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old, Open our lips that we too may sing with uplifted heart. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Goodwill toward all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now Isaiah 9 verses 2 through 7. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. And men rejoice when they divide the spoil. 
For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments milled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his kingdom and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's continue in our celebration with song with number 219, What Child Is This? For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. Our next hymn to 
join in singing together is number 238, Angels We Have Heard on High. Our next reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Canarius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone in his own city. Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were com completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, a, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was. Then the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that had heard and seen as it was told them. When I spoke earlier about the God who shows up, did you notice something about the people that God called? A Chaldean shop owner's son. Probably not a store like we think of today, but most likely by today's standards, a street vendor, moving from place to place within the city of Ur to where the people were, so they might sell enough to keep the family going another day. The son of a slave prepared in Pharaoh's palace, but still a slave. An outsider with the government and his own people, the Israelites. And then the shepherd boy David called to be king. Remember? He was an outlaw. And after being anointed king, before finally becoming the king, these were not perfect. Nor wealthy when they started out. They were just willing to say yes when God showed up and called them. This Advent season, we've taken a closer look at others to whom God showed up. Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph all had to answer yes to this God who shows up and calls them. Tonight and tomorrow we celebrate the birth of the baby who proves that God shows up. And he was born in a stable, placed in a manger, a feeding trough of all things. Yes, God showed up. And he sent out a birth announcement not to the rich and powerful. Remember, the Herodium was right there, visible from anywhere in Bethlehem, but God didn't send the announcement to King Herod. The God who shows up sent his messengers to the lowest of the low, the night shepherds. From the moment he was born, he was humble. The Jews were looking and praying for a priest, a king, a savior. The God who shows up showed up for the humble, the lowly. God always comes for those who are humble to lift him up. This God who showed up in a feeding trough grew up to teach that in God's kingdom, the last shall be first, the least shall be greatest, and that if we humble ourselves, we can receive God. Are we paying attention? There's a song in the air.
interview that Adam Hamilton did with the shepherd. The shepherd said, sheep eat from the manger. I have already said more than once that it was a feeding trough that the baby Jesus was laid in when he was born. Also remember that this was in Bethlehem. If you've read the journey from which our series, Advent series of sermons came from, or maybe you've heard it from uh, other sources, Bethlehem means house of bread. Farmers in the area grew the ingredients. There would have been millers who refined the crops. There would have been bakers to bake it. And in all likelihood, it would have been taken a few hours journey to Jerusalem to be sold and or used in temple worship. Later when speaking to the religious leaders of his day, Jesus drew on this heritage to declare, I am the bread of life. Using that same imagery, when Jesus was preparing to die, he met with his disciples in the upper room, took the loaf and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Every time we receive communion, we remember that Jesus is the bread of life. Don't miss the importance of the manger, a feeding trough. When the bread of life was born on this earth, he was placed in a feeding trough. Jesus is the God who shows up for the humble to give and sustain life. Do we feed on the bread of life? Let us pray. Jesus, we remember this night that you, the bread of life, were born to the humble, the poor, the lowly of this world. We remember that you came as Emmanuel, God with us, to show us the way to God. In you, O oh Lord, we see the God who continually shows up, calling men and women to open themselves up to you. This night, as we prepare to have communion with you, come and show us how we might be your representatives in our world. Use us, Savior, Priest, King, Jesus, as your people. Amen. This night, as we prepare to receive, we remember the manger and the stable. And we remember the bread of life poured out for us. The ushers will come forward now as I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus who gave himself for us, who showed us how to live. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon us gathered here and upon these elements of wafer and juice, that they might be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be your people, O oh Lord. We remember that on the night he offered himself up for us. Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to you, and he offered it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you. And when the meal was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, O Lord. He gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so, O Lord, we do give thanks. We give thanks for all that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. The ushers will come and pass the wafers and the juice among the aisles. And as they do, we would invite you to keep your elements and we'll all receive together once we've all received them. But as they pass these in the pews, let us sing together, O little town of Bethlehem.
I would remind you that there are two parts to the top. The first is a almost clear cellophane, and you peel that back to take the wafer out. And then once you've removed the wafer, you can peel back the deeper purple to get to the juice. We have been made one body in Christ. So together, we receive the body of Christ broken for us. It is through the matchless flood of Christ that we have all been brought in to the family of God. And so we receive the juice to remind us of the blood of Christ shed. Lord, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us, especially we thank you this night for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The ushers are going to come forward. We're going to light our, they're going to light their candles from the Christ candle as a reminder that we all receive life from Jesus and we shine our lights together. I would also remind you that as they come to the end of each aisle, that the one with the flame not turn their candle, but rather hold it straight and let those who are lighting their candle then dip theirs. And as they, they do, we will sing together Silent Night.
We go forward from this place taking the light of Jesus, the light that he's shed and born in us. Let us go as people who've been with Jesus. May those around us recognize that this night we have been with Jesus. Go and take God's light with us as we sing joy to the world.